I grew up backpacking with my family and I love hiking and I've climbed, I climbed the Grand Teton, um, 10, not quite 10 years ago, but almost 10 years ago. And, uh, actually the summer, I think it will be 10 years ago. Anyway, that's scary. Um, but my sister and brother-in-law worked search and rescue in Yosemite for five years and they now live, they went away for many years, but they now actually live in Mammoth, California, which is just outside the park. And so, um, that, you know, I, I had heard their stories for years and years of years of the things they had encountered while they were there. And I think, um, just being back in that environment, uh, when, you know, they, they moved back there and, and I'd spent time there and then, um, the Gabby Petito disappearance happened and that took place in, Te in Grand Teton where I've also spent a bunch of time, but, um, I think it, that was just sort of the, the fuse that lit the match of, of, of this particular story. And so it's not, it's not Gabby's story, but, um, I, I like to say it's sort of what I wish had happened to Gabby maybe, um, cause that's such a tragedy, but, um, I think there's something about being in an environment where it's your job to save other people um, that just heightens the stakes right away. And it is such an evocative place. Um, you know, it's it's really extraordinary how different the different parts of the park are as well. It's it's a huge, huge park. Um, and, you know, the part where the park is set in Tuolumne is very different from the Valley Floor. Um, and, um, but I think, you know, it's, yeah, it's just a great setting, I think. And, and I did watch like every climbing, I'm not a climber, I'm afraid of heights, but my sister is a big climber and I watched every climbing documentary, I think that is out there in a pretty short span to sort of dive into that climber's world. And there's technical terms. And again, it's like, it needs to be real enough to feel real and I'm sure I have lots of things wrong. And I put in a disclaimer for my sister and brother-in-law in there. It's like, if there are mistakes, it's not their fault. It's <laughs> so it's called Panthera Leo. And that's the taxonomical name of lions. And, and they, they're organized into prides and um, it's like a big theme in their group. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wanted to, what I was trying to do with Please Join Us is to make basically everyone in the book is a woman. There are a few men, but they're really side characters. And I, I wanted the hero to be a woman, the villains to be women, you know, the people in between. And and the men in the book are relegated to the characters that women often play in those types of stories. And, and that was deliberate. And so um, I think it's, you know, people have all these expectations or tropes around women being competitive against one another in the workplace. I think a lot of that actually comes from inherent misogyny because if you're the only woman in a room and another woman walks in <laughs> is she coming to take my place whereas men don't feel that way because they're used to having all the spots you know so um but um I think he, here it was it was fun to ex explore what would happen if women were in all the spots basically and um what starts out as something I think they think they're being altruistic but as these groups often do it's my second cult book. It's this, you know, told from a different perspective um, that, you know, the problem with cults is <laughs> that they become very self-referential and exclusive, exclusionary, and they think that they have like the answer to how things should be um, and are operating outside of the normal rules. And so, you know, it's always fun to raise that sort of stuff too, right? Like, what could we do if we just didn't care about whether we were going to get caught or not? the three book um, funny mystery series. The first book is called um, Every Time I Go on Vacation, Someone Dies. <laughs> and it's about a author who has a long running mystery series and it's based on a real person. So the protagonist is a real person who's driving her nuts and she wants to kill him off in the books and they're on tour together in Italy and she's literally plotting his fictional death when he comes up to her and says that someone's trying to kill him and off they go <laughs> um so yeah it, it's been really fun to write a funny lighter 
version of of what I've been doing and and to write a series for the first time, which is really a different way of thinking about things because to date, I've known I was done with a book when I don't think about these people anymore and I don't care. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. And but now I have to I have to be with them for many books. And so the whole approach even to character is quite different. Um because you need somebody that people are going to want to follow through those books, you know, and you need to think about things like, okay, well, how much later after the first book am I going to set the second book? Because you don't want to run into the, like, you have to plan for success and you don't want to be in those situations where 25 years have passed, but your characters have aged six months and all that sort of stuff. So 